The first one is that um, human brains are unique. They're about as unique as a human face. So that means that there's, there's this analogy here in which you have similar parts. For example, we all have, you know, the frontal lobes are in the same place or the occipital lobe is in the same place. So the parts are pretty much the same and in the same place, but there are no two that are identical. Even though we all have two eyes and a nose and a mouth, uh, we're not identical, which is pretty much this parallel idea of the brain. Human brains are unique as human faces, and while the basic structure of most human brains are the same, you know, similar parts and similar regions, there are no two brains that are identical. The genetic makeup unique to each person combines with life experiences and free will to shape the different neural pathways. So humans are unique. Now if we know that, and that is a truth that can come out of the lab and be put into our classroom, then that makes us think now, how does this impact you know, teaching? What does this mean about um, testing requirements? When we think that all kids should be tested in the month of April, um, everybody who is seven years old, it doesn't matter if you just turned seven or if you've been seven for 11 and a half months, uh, you need to have a certain ability. Is that fair? Is that really fair um, when we know that all people are quite unique? Um, this also makes us reflect again on this concept of meeting standards um, versus understanding mastery. Uh, what does it really mean to graduate from 11th grade chemistry or something like that? Okay, let's decide what that is. That's mastery goals. So all the different students in the class will start at different levels, right? But we know this is where they all have to get to. So. Can we set up mastery as opposed to standards? So some people will work faster, some people work slower, and that's just life, right? This also makes us think about how technology might be used in our classrooms. Could you actually flip your classroom um, and leverage technology in this way to better differentiate, you know? Because we know that not, not all brains are good at all things, and, and some will need more rehearsal than others to master those core concepts we're talking about. So can we create a way to, for example, differentiate for homework by using technology to apply our understanding about what we know about the uniqueness of human brains. This might lead, uh, for example, to changes in uh, schools or school districts about um, policies. You know, do we, should we, or could we have a differentiated evaluation process in which we use, for example, um, e-portfolios and document a student's progress towards that mastery over time as opposed to just, you know, his test score. Is that possible? Is that something we could change? Could we become more welcoming to technology and actually flip the classroom and have differentiated levels of homework for different students in that classroom? So hopefully this helps us celebrate, you know, the uniqueness of the human brain. It's wonderful. It's not to say though, however, and Yes, human brains are unique, but that doesn't mean that every single person needs an individual learning plan. Most people learn similar things in a similar trajectory. This is something that we know of uh, from the studies of neuroconstructivism, where there are really, there are fundamental pieces that have to be in place before you can build on top of those. And that's, that's true for everybody. So even though we're unique, it's unique, but it's not to say that you have to have different uh, lesson plans for every single person in your classroom. It means that, yes, you can follow basic learning trajectories, but you have to appreciate how individual those kids are in your classroom.